You gotta see this one. The woke culture is on the track towards self implosion as more and more people are waking up to their lies and seeing the hypocrisy through their actions which contradict with their statements. This growing awareness is leading to a broader skepticism and Bill Maher is one of those people where he called out Charlemagne the God for spreading false victimhood narratives on how black women are at a disadvantage because they are oppressed. But before I delve deeper into it, watch this clip. One of the more controversial things he said was he said to the graduating class that you have to be 10 times as good to get uh, a fair shot in America. You agree with that? Uh, I don't know if it's 10 times better, but maybe five. Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you know. think you have to be five times? Yeah. When, you, when you're black in America, absolutely. In 2024? Yeah, when, you, when you're black in America, when you're a woman in America, if you're a black woman in America, absolutely. I think that's, I think that's a zombie lie. Why? Because I just don't think that's America anymore. That's typical race baiting as statements overgeneralize the experience of women and people of color, implying that all individuals in these groups encounter these same challenges across various contexts. This type of rhetoric is not only discouraging, but also diminishes the experiences and achievements within these communities, and there are multiple examples of that, such as successful athletes like the Williams sisters in tennis. It also suggests that regardless of effort or qualifications, these individuals are inherently at a disadvantage, creating a sense of hopelessness and deterring people from pursuing their goals. By the way, do subscribe for more discussions just like this. Such statements undermine the achievements of women and people of color by arguing that their success is due to extraordinary effort or luck rather than talent, skill, and determination. This leads to the creation of harmful stereotypes and undervalues their contributions, implying that they're less deserving of their positions or accomplishments. Additionally, it reinforces the false notion that those groups are not naturally suited for certain roles or success, which can stigmatize their genuine capabilities and achievements. Overall, these generalized assertions serve to deepen societal divisions and create a victimhood mentality. But Charlemagne wasn't done there. He also commented on the Caitlin Clark situation in the WNBA. Watch the next clip to see his take. This young woman, there's so many examples where, I mean, black people are very marketable. Well, ask yourself and this. She think, why and she it? seems to have been indoctrinated into this. They don't see it as marketable, so it doesn't matter how hard I work. Well, I don't been, think that's, that's accurate or healthy. Well, I mean, Asian, when people come into the league and they're like the biggest thing in college, isn't that a big deal? No, because Asia Wilson was the biggest thing when she came out of South Carolina. That's where I'm from. So she was one of the biggest things when she came out of South Carolina, number one draft pick. And she didn't get all of that. So what do you attribute that to? I, I mean, you th you're saying that's racism. No, that I'm not saying it's racist. I'm just saying that I think Asia Wilson has a point. And I think sometimes when, uh, you know, uh, black women say certain things, we should listen, and especially her, because I'm not in her shoes. I don't know. But why, why was Serena Williams such a big star? Because people like that. It, they didn't not watch her because she was black, right? Yeah. Okay. So where are we with this? I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I'm just sitting back observing the conversation, you know, but I do think... Well, you're that, in the conversation. What do you mean? I'm not a woman. <laughs> I'm not a, you're in this conversation. See the hate and hypocrisy, people? Caitlyn receiving the recognition she deserves doesn't take away from Aja Wilson's achievements. She's still a two-time WNBA MVP and is putting up great stats this season. But you can't deny that Caitlyn is a generational talent. Even the Warriors head coach Steve Kerr praised her and compared her to Stephen Curry. Her experience of receiving hate in the league should raise major concerns about underlying racism and its manifestations within professional sports because it's apparent that the wolf is playing sheep in this case. I also love how Charlemagne quickly reflects when Bill presses him if this issue is related to racism, shows how woke arguments are hollow and indefensible. In addition to that, Aja is clearly contradicting with her previous statements because she called for closing the pay gap between the NBA and WNBA players. But how is that supposed to happen in a league that treats one of its rising stars this way and as a result turns potential viewers away? This is what you get when you bombard people with falsehoods about the racial relations and they start viewing each other as enemies. Bill had more in the bag to prove how some players in the WNBA are approaching Caitlyn's rise and ill intentions. Watch this next clip to see for yourself. Show the tape of her getting body checked. This is a game the other day, and she... I mean, that was pretty deliberate. And look at the other girl on her team coming over. Not... See, if this was men, they defend each other on their same team. I mean, men will fight from two teams, but when somebody checks you on who's on your team, you defend that guy. Now, there's also a racial element to this. We can't deny that. I'll just say, it's not always racism when a white person succeeds. Okay. And it's not always racism when black people hip-check them, either. 
right? Like right. it's no. it both both are at play. No. I think it's natural well, for a megastar to come in no. and people say, I'm kind of tired of hearing it's about everything. It. It's everything. Yeah. It's women are catty. The league <laughs> the league is, is is very lesbian, and she's not. Um, and there's race. It's, there's a lot of going on. Here. Bill is absolutely right. I think if this happened in the NBA, people would be throwing hands at each other and a massive brawl would have erupted. Are they mad because a rookie is bringing in more viewership to the league than anyone ever could since its inception in 1997? Just look at the numbers. She broke the viewership record for six TV networks that broadcast the game so far, and the season's not yet finished. Caitlin also brought record numbers to the NCAA tournament, the Associated Press, even went as far as saying that, quote, she was a big reason why a record 18.9 million viewers tuned to the national championship game, so you would think WNBA players would treat the Clark tsunami like a godsend, which it is, and look forward to the day they make more money than an MLB groundskeeper. Nope, they just keep committing vicious attacks on her because of her being different than them which only got worse after she landed a $28 million Nike shoe deal. Even LeBron James weighed in on the issue. Watch what he has to say in this next clip. The one thing that I love that she's bringing to her sport, more people want to watch. More people want to tune in. I saw for the first time that they had, they had a chartered plane for the first time in their league history. You know, they flew private. That should be celebrated in his own right. That should be celebrated. And it's because of Caitlin Clark. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it fucked up. Caitlin Clark is the reason why a lot of great things is going to happen for the WNBA. Um, but for her individually, I don't think she should get involved on nothing that's being said. Just go have fun, enjoy. This is one of the rare times where I agree with LeBron James. I think more WNBA players should listen to him and adopt a similar mentality because he clearly knows a thing or two about marketing himself. Talents like Caitlyn have the ability to transform a sport from vague irrelevance to serious conversation if given the chance, so they shouldn't shoot themselves in the foot by butchering her with their wicked behavior. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think the WNBA players are being racist with how they're dealing with Caitlyn's rise? Let's get the conversation rolling in the comments down below.